So let's let's dissect these three that were quote unquote positive. So NINS2, this is where we got this drug, right? So they had a lot of things stacking the, the deck in their favor. Half the patients had to be recruited within 90 minutes, which is crazy early. And the other ones were between 90 and 180 minutes. So there's a lot of evidence of bias in the study. They refused to release their initial primary outcome. They actually changed the primary outcome during the study because their initial study was change in your NIH stroke scale. They got rid of that and they did it for a very good reason, which is because if you didn't do that, your study was robustly negative. We'll show you the chart in a second. There's a Freedom of Information Act because they accepted government funds. Genentech, the company behind it, fought for many years in court to refuse to release the information from the government funded study they added money to as well. They, they actually was a lawsuit that was required before they released the data on the patients for this. When you look at the graphical reanalysis of this, you'll also see that this really was not the, the positive result that they had. And there was actually internal documentation in the company that they said that we really do not want to repeat the study between zero and three hours, because if that one's negative, people will stop using our drug. That's a document that exists, and no one has ever looked again at zero to three hours in this population since this happened. You got that one positive study. Now, many people are saying it would be, quote, unethical to further study this drug. So let's look at NINS2 no, NINS in graphic form. So the biggest determinant of your outcome after a stroke is how bad is your stroke? I know that sounds basic, but if you come in with an NIH stroke scale that's through the roof because you're almost in a coma, it doesn't matter how good your therapies are, it's very unlikely that you're going to have a great outcome. If you have a really low NIH stroke scale where you have just say minimal hand weakness or something like that, you're probably going to do great even if we did nothing. If we walked out of the room, you're going to do well. And it really wasn't apparent that they were actually having any problems with randomization. It just happened to be the people that got randomized to placebo were much sicker. So if you looked at what their initial study design was, which was change in the NIH stroke scale, you'll actually see that there was the same change in NIH stroke scale in both groups. There wasn't really a difference. And that's re reflected in these charts where it just goes across and they just stay the same. Okay, there's really not much change, regardless whether you got the drug or not. It just happened to be the people in the placebo arm were much, much sicker. So this was basically data dredging. They changed their primary outcome when it was obvious that it wasn't going to work. This, at best, suggests a new study and shouldn't be used as a definitive study. So what else were, was evidence of bias in this terrible, god-awful study that plagues us to this day? Well, it turns out that there were some serious problems, such as they said that some uh, infarct volumes were actually larger than the size of the human skull. That's actually some of their data when they looked at it. So it, the data collection was not ideal in this study at all. There's a lot of problems with 